Johnny Dollar. Dollar, this is Peter H. Fillmore at the office of Surety Mutual Insurance Limited here in Denver. Mr. Fillmore. Dollar, I want you out here. I've just uncovered a racket that has been costing our company a lot of money. What kind of a racket? Robberies. Grocery store robberies. Whole series of them. What's being taken? Cash or goods? Cash. On Saturday nights. With most discouraging regularity. But, Dollar, with all the facts I can give you, well, I see no reason why you shouldn't be able to round up the gang that's doing this in short order. You think there's a gang involved? That's my conclusion, and I'm certain you'll agree with it when I give you the information I have. I see. Which means there may be some danger involved in this investigation. Well, that's the understatement of the week. However, I understand you're quite used to that sort of thing. Oh? And in view of the importance to our company of putting a stop to these robberies, of bringing the criminals to justice... Now, Mr. Fellow, Well, we shan't quibble over your expense account, or even any extraordinary expenses you may incur. Now, look... And, Dollar, there will also be the customary fee the commission for any recovery of actual money you may be able to evade. Listen, would you please? More than ample compensation, I would say, for the fact your own life may be endangered. So, Dollar... Mr. Fillmore, I'll, I... will expect you out here on the first possible plane flight. Goodbye, sir. Huh? Oh, sure. Goodbye. Maybe forever, huh? <laughs> CBS Radio brings you Bob Bailey in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. And now, act one of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Surety Mutual Insurance Limited, Denver office. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the Saturday night matter. After including an extra box of 38 shells in my luggage, I spent item one, $77, plane fare, Hartford to Denver, Colorado. Item two is $1.95 for a cab to the office of Surety Mutual and Mr. Peter H. Fillmore. Here in Denver? No, Dollar. All over the state. In a regular pattern. A pattern that has finally, today, enabled me to realize there's a connection between these robberies. Well, you better tell me all about it, Mr. Fillmore. Well, in the first place, you must understand that insurance against loss of actual cash. Well, not many companies issue it. Without limit, that is. So I understand. However, since virtually all of our accounts are the commercial type... You understand what I mean by that? Yeah, I think so. Instead of individual life and home policies, endowments, that sort of thing. Exactly. Manufacturing plants, merchandising organizations, that sort of thing. Including a great many stores, both large and small. Including 50 or more grocery stores, supermarkets. I see. Dollar, it was my own idea to insure them against unlimited loss by robbery. And I must say it's increased our number of clients considerably. Yeah, I think so. But don't the premiums for that kind of protection have to come pretty high? Oh, very high. As a result, the company has shown a very nice profit over the past couple of years. But, of course, if these robberies continue... Yeah, you say there's been a definite pattern to them. Yes. To begin with, Dollar, every one of them has occurred on a Saturday night. When the markets are likely to have more cash on hand than usual, huh? Exactly. How many robberies have there been? So far, eight. Well, that's about time you were catching up with them. Exactly. So, on with the pattern. The robbers have forced their way in at gunpoint, just as the owner, alone, was about to lock up and leave. Uh In each case, there have been two of them, wearing nylon stockings over their faces by way of disguise. One of them, tall and husky, the other one, short and thin. Uh That's about as much description as we've been able to learn from the store owners. And don't forget, Dollar. There's been no real coordination of police effort in these robberies. Because they've all occurred in different towns. Exactly. And that brings us to the important part of the pattern, which I only realized this morning. Whereupon I called you immediately. Well? The first was right here in Denver. The next in Pueblo, then Colorado Springs, Aurora, Lakewood, Englewood, Greeley. Last Saturday, a week ago tonight, the Casey Market over in Boulder was robbed. True to pattern. I'm afraid I don't quite see it. Well, Denver, the largest city in the state. Then Pueblo, the next largest. I'll take your word for it. Then Colorado Springs, next in size to Pueblo. Then Aurora. And so on down the line? Exactly, Dollar. Exactly. 
And the last robbery was in Boulder? Just a week ago. So there may be another one tonight. Uh-huh. All right. If you know the population of the various towns in the state as well as you seem to, you ought to be able to tell me where they'll go next, whether it's tonight or next Saturday or whenever. Uh, that's just the trouble. What? Until I get the latest population figures, well, I don't know. It'll be either in Wheat Ridge, barely northwest of Denver here, or in Grand Junction. How far away is that? Some 260 miles. Oh, great. Now, the last figures I have show 18,014 in Wheat Ridge, 18,021 in Grand Junction. But that may have changed by now. And there's no way of checking? Not before tonight, when there may be another robbery. Yet somehow you must decide on one of those towns and be there to prevent it. I must decide. Of course. And I'm certain you realize how important your decision is. Oh, sure. Very well, then, Dollar. Which is it? Wheat Ridge or Grand Junction? Well, come on, man. There isn't much time. Well, let me see if I have a quarter in my pocket. Hmm? Yeah, here we are. I'm afraid I don't understand. Pretty important decision, huh? It certainly is. Okay, then. Heads, I go to Wheat Ridge. Huh? Tails, I go to Grand Junction. What? Can you think of a better way? And now, act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar and the Saturday Night Matter. Now, now, Dollar, do you mean to say you think you can determine which city this gang of grocery store robbers will hit by the flip of a coin? This is ridiculous. I asked you, can you think of a better way? Uh, Well? All right, Dollar. Okay, then. But don't you see, if you go to Wheat Ridge, they strike in Grand Junction. It'd be kind of too bad, wouldn't it? Exactly. We'd have to pay off another big insurance claim. Perhaps thousands of dollars. And, Dollar, I'd hold you responsible. Me? Yes. Responsible for what, Mr. Fillmore? Huh? And I take it you're Johnny Dollar. Now, look here, Dollar. This is the most... Easy, easy, P.H. Oh. Oh, uh, Dollar, this is Albert Berry, my assistant. How are you, Johnny? How? Albert is the one who really built up this plan of mine for insuring the stores against loss of cash. I see. And if you want my opinion, P.H., and I've said this before, we'd better stop issuing any more such policies right away. No. Cancel those that are outstanding. Give them a rebate and forget this whole thing. No, Albert. Admit that we're beaten by a bunch of crooks? You know I wouldn't. Yes, I know you wouldn't. But I still think you should. If we have to face any more of these losses... Let me worry about the losses. You just keep running up your nice big commissions on those policies and be glad you're getting them. No, sir. Well, what do you mean by that? I mean that I won't let you. P.H. Well? P.H., I, uh, I'd rather leave the company than have to continue feeling responsible as I do. Responsible? For what? Don't you understand, sir? I'm the one who sold the policies. And if any more of these robberies occur... Oh, uh, don't worry, my boy. They won't. Thanks to my perceptive mind, little ingenuity, my own deductions... Dollar here is going to put a stop to them. Well, I knew you were sending for Mr. Dollar, but how will he know where the the gang plans to operate next? Well, of course he will. At least. Well, very easy, Al. Look here. What? Tails. Okay, that means that I'm about to head for, uh... Uh Uh-huh. Yes? Where? Dollar, good heavens, Just man. keep your shirt on, Mr. Fillmore. But if these criminals... If they hit the other town on the list, they won't stand a chance of getting away with it there either. How... How can you be sh- sure? Just leave it to me, huh? Dollar. Now, I'll see you later. I gotta get busy. The coin had come up tails. That meant I was to head for Grand Junction. Yeah, I know it's crazy, but that's the way it was. Since it was afternoon, I'd have to make good time to get there before dark. So, expense account item 350 bucks deposit on a rental car. But first, I drove to Wheat Ridge, to the police headquarters there. I talked with the Sergeant Keesley. Oh, well, sure, the supermarket's just a couple of blocks south of here. You must have passed it. Yeah, I did. Well, don't worry, Dollar. If they hit again tonight and that's their target, they won't stand a chance. We'll have that place so well covered. Good, good. Well, then, wait. What if they pick Grand Junction? You want me to phone the boys in the department over there? No, that won't be necessary. I'm heading on over there right now. Good. That's better than me trying to explain this complicated pattern you've stumbled on. Yeah. Now, your man there in Grand Junction is Lieutenant Dick Spidel. Okay. You tell him you've talked to me and he'll do anything you want. Good. He's a nice cooperative guy and he knows his way around. First, we can't be sure they'll operate again tonight. Maybe they'll skip a week. We'll still be ready for them if they follow their pattern. 
So will the boys in Grand Junction. Okay. Thanks, Sergeant. I'll be in touch. I picked up Route 6 and headed on west. Fortunately, the traffic was light, and I made good time over the broad, winding highway. And I'll say this, it's a mighty beautiful drive through that country. More than once, I spotted clear, cold streams where I... Well, I knew darn well there were plenty of fighting trout to be taken during the season. And maybe with luck, I'll be able to go back someday and wet a line. There in the shadow of one of the imposing mountain peaks. I stopped at Glenwood Springs long enough to gas up and grab a sandwich. That's item four, five and a quarter. Then drove on, hoping an early sunset wouldn't spoil the view of the scenery. But you know something? Keeping at that scenery was my undoing. Yeah, too much attention to it. It caused me to disregard another car on the road following me. And it finally caught up with me at the beginning of a short detour only a few miles from Grand Junction, about where Asbury Creek joins the Colorado River. The highway was wet from the melted snow. It slowed down to cross a narrow temporary wooden bridge when the other car pulled up to me, then swung into my left rear and threw me into a skid. Hey, what the devil? Act three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in just a moment. And now, act three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Things were a little vague after my car got pushed off the road on the way into Grand Junction. I remember lying there in the wreckage, cold, terribly cold, but unable to move. Then the state highway patrolman who came along pulled me out from under the steering post, and I remember passing out again when the warmth inside their car hit me. I remember being wheeled along on a stretcher through a long corridor, the smell of antiseptics, then the sight of a hand with a hypo in it poised above my left arm. Nothing but shock, I'm certain of it. This will help him to sleep. And in a few hours, he should... After that, a soft, warm, comforting darkness. Oblivion. Then, when I finally came to, and there was sunlight streaming in through the hospital window... Huh? Just huh? take it easy, Dollar. What? Take it easy and get some rest, and you'll be all okay. I'm Lieutenant Dick Spidle. Oh, Lieutenant. Sergeant Keasley over at Wheat Ridge called about you. Yeah, well, Just look, I... wanted to make sure everything was all right over here. You're in Grand Junction, you know. Yeah, was there... Did they nab the gang behind the market robbery uh, last night, was it? No trouble at all over there. Nothing happened. But I sure wish you hadn't skidded off the road skidded. before you could get Listen, to me. Listen, there was another car. It came up behind yeah, you. Yeah, I know, I know. So far, we haven't been able to get a lead on it. What if they didn't hit the market over there? Yeah, Dollar. It was the Bluebird supermarket right down the street from here. Over 3,000 bucks. Yeah? Well? A set of tire marks. Same as from the car that ran you off the road. But that's all. Oh. Except for one thing. What's that? What? Now, look, you're in no shape to worry about what, this yeah, thing well, now. You, you, you said the except for one says thing. you need a lot of rest. What is it? But when you're up and around What again, is it, Lieutenant? Well, when Barnaby Schultz came out here from the west and opened that market... Yeah? Well, always when somebody comes here with a lot of money, I run a check on him. And? Schultz has a record of stock manipulations of phony bankruptcies across the country as long as your arm. Sure. Sure. So when his market gets robbed after he's made sure of collecting a lot of insurance for it... We're thinking about it, isn't it? Oh, you bet your sweet So you lie here quietly and think about it, Dollar. Oh, wait a minute, and Lieutenant. And in case you're thinking about getting out of here and doing something about it before now, you're okay again... listen, will you... Well, it just happens I have a man outside the door to see that you don't. Not until the doc says you can. Lieutenant! You take care of yourself. <laughs> Now, act four of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Early the next morning, I was out of the hospital and back in Denver at the office of Peter Fillmore. I was sure I had a lot of the answers to this case and told him so. Yes, go on, Dollar. Well, sure, it's an open invitation to robbery. Well, uh, don't you see, the market owners could arrange these robberies themselves... Not only collect the insurance, but get a cut on whatever was taken. Good heavens. Yeah, sure. And, and look, didn't you tell me the owners couldn't seem to come up with a very good description of the crooks? Couldn't or wouldn't? They've done it themselves. Every man has a price. No, that isn't the answer. Well, not all of it. 
Each one of them arranging himself wouldn't account for a whole string of them in various different towns. So it means that somebody's been getting to them, that somebody's been running a robbery ring. But that means... Why don't you see, Dollar? That means the ringleader must be someone who knows exactly which of the markets has bought this type of insurance from us. To quote you, Mr. Fillmore, exactly. So you'd better start thinking of somebody right here in your own office. Exactly. Sure. No, I mean... You mean exactly because he could clean up on this operation both ways. By getting a nice fat commission on all the policies that he sold... But the only And then man... by arranging the robberies, then taking a cut on them. Good, good heavens, I simply can't believe that... Al Berry, collecting both ways. Real smart about it, too. He told you he wanted you to give up this silly insurance. But he knew that you wouldn't. Albert. But even if you did, he wouldn't care, because he's already cleaned up enough to walk out of here a rich man. And you'd better not move, either one of you. Albert. Well, hi, Al. I heard everything, Dollar. Good for you. You should have made it so obvious that you went through my files before I got here this morning. Well, now, that's right, I did. To see how your list of policies compared with the markets that have been held up, it was a dead giveaway, Al. Was it? I mean, you're pulling those jobs in the same order as the insurance you sold. Starting with the biggest accounts in the biggest towns and working on down. <laughs> Pretty stupid, Al. All right, Dollar. Oh, no. Have you seen a gun with a silencer? Now, look, don't be silly, please. Do you think I'd be foolish enough to have come over here alone, knowing what I know about this? What are you talking about? The police. What else? Oh, sure. Standing right outside the door, waiting. That's right. Don't try to be cute, Dollar. It won't work. Huh? That's right. No, no, listen, Sergeant. Just you... relax, Al. Enough to let that thing drop out of your hand. Gently. Thanks, Sergeant. Sure. In the hope it might make things easier for him, Al produced the punks who'd been working with him, who'd actually pulled the jobs. And then he came up with most of the dough for the robberies. But you know something... I doubt if it'll do him any good, nor the store owners who'd played along with him. Expense account total, including hospital bill on the ride back to Hartford, 30101. And I'll leave the car that was wrecked to you. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Our star will return in just a moment. Now, here is our star to tell you about next week's program. Next week, down to Sarasota, Florida, to a case of the almost perfect crime. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, originates in Hollywood and is written, produced, and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in our cast were Bartlett Robinson, James McCallion, Forrest Lewis, and Russell Thorson. 